Cool, man. Excellent. We'll see you around. Uh, my name is Paul Wedgwood, I'm the CEO of Splash Damage and the game director on Brink. So in Brink, you can play through the entire game, perhaps as the Resistance, witnessing their side of the story. So it has a completely different narrative arc, a different cinematic, some unique districts that you only get to visit when you're on that campaign. And as a Resistance, you're fighting on behalf of the refugees. These are the guys who believe in a fairer distribution of resources and are really just trying to get that kind of fair deal by fighting for what they believe in. And they're fighting what they perceive to be a, a, a really oppressive security force. But you can also play as that security force too, with a completely different set of character outfit upgrades, going on a different campaign witnessing their side of the battle with a different series of cinematics and a different narrative. The idea behind this really is just to kind of give you both sides of the story and to give you that different experience because it's so different, you know, being on defense as security with a base being attacked and say playing uh, as resistance on one of their missions with a different story and a different narrative. So in Brink, there are two ways that you earn rewards, things that are purely aesthetic, that let people know how great you are at playing the game and then things that are truly gameplay affecting and we have these kind of two themes of rewards going on through the game all the time uh, at this event you know we're demonstrating things like the challenge modes and when you play through the challenge modes you're able to unlock cool uh, outfits and weapon unlocks and customization that allows you to kind of specialize the way that you use weapons but as you level up through the game you also earn credits that you can spend on abilities that allow you to specialize too the idea behind the system is really just to give you a character that you want to invest time in, irrespective of whether you're playing offline or online. So we have a new interface that works in 3D. You can rotate your character, zoom in on the head, uh, apply things like windscreen scars and then stubble and maybe like clown face paint and give them a hat and goggles and then different cool outfits. And then you can go into those outfits and modify their properties to change things like their colors and the logos and stuff on those as well. So you can have a unique look for your character that you've created that kind of represents the way that you want to be portrayed with some of that equipment letting people know that you've achieved you know, specific achievements while playing. Then you can take something like a weapon. Uh, for example, uh, I just showed the uh, Carb 9. You know, with the Carb 9 submachine gun, you can swap out the rail on the top and put maybe a red dot sight or a scope. You could swap out the front unit and put something like a silencer or a muzzle brake. On the under rail, you could add something like a grenade launcher or maybe a front grip that reduces recoil and even upgrade the magazine. So there's loads of things that you can do with individual weapons to really convert them to being a gun that suits the way that you want to play. So, I mean, one of the great things about the game is that it suits two different types of player. You could be completely new to shooters, just wanting to run and gun and witness cool big cinematics and blow the gates off buildings. And we've shown that kind of play in, in uh, gameplay footage that we've released already, like Container City. One of the things that we're doing now is starting to show people what happens when you've been playing for a few weeks. Uh, for example, if you're level 14 and you're two thirds through leveling up a character and you can earn cool abilities that allow you to specialize in your combat role more. So if you're just running and gunning and wanting universal abilities, of course we have standard things like attribute modifiers, but there are cool things as well like uh, like things like senses that you can get that allow you to identify when you're in the crosshairs of enemies. So it's not like an aimbot, but it gives you enough time to find cover or concealment or fortification when you're under fire. Uh, we have things like sense of perspective where you can go into a third person view while you're completing objectives. So you can look around the battlefield to see if there's enemies you know, attacking you while you're hacking in. And you can also check out how cool you look while you're doing that. But for hardcore players, that are really starting to enjoy specific combat roles, like say the operative, which is really stealthy. You can sneak behind enemy lines, use disguises, hack into computers. If you're playing that combat role, you can start to get upgrades like comms hack, where you can scan an incapacitated enemy to temporarily reveal the location of enemies on the battlefield so you can try and avoid them, or to track down the location of the enemy using the objective wheel and then disguise yourself as them stealing their uniform so you can sneak into the enemy base and hack open a back, or, uh, back door to get your teammates through. So it really opens up the way that you play the game when you, when you invest that amount of time. So Brink is scheduled for release on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC in spring 2011.